Here we go, guys. This is the video on repentance. The reason why we're bringing this video on repentance is because so many people talk about you need to repent. But what is it you need to repent from? Or what is repentance? And guys, my good friends from the U.S., Don Blizzard, uh, Anthony, Donovan, have decided to help us to make this video on bringing you full understanding. This is going to bring freedom. It's going to bring truth. And guys, repent. Repent from your way of doing things and turn to God's way of doing things. Hello, my name is Donovan Dreyfus. I invite you to take a small exploration with me on the idea of repentance. When Jesus preached from city to city, he declared, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So Jesus encouraged people to repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. Repentance is associated with the kingdom of God. That's the benefit of repentance. When we repent, we get directly plugged into the kingdom of God. What repentance means traditionally is a remorse or a regret for committing sin or wrongdoing. It also means a change of mind. It's a turning from one thing to another. So when Jesus preached, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand, he was telling us to turn from something and turn to the kingdom of God. So repentance is a transitional action, if you will. It's a starting of a turning from something to turning towards something. And that's what Jesus was encouraging the people. He was saying, turn from sin to the kingdom of God. Turn from wrongdoing to the kingdom of God. Turn from the world or worldliness to the kingdom of God. Jesus presented the kingdom of God and he wanted the people to turn their attention to the God of the kingdom. Now, the kingdom of God is God's domain. So as Jesus walked from city to city, he literally represented and presented God's domain on the earth. So repentance is an invitation of turning from the world, turning from selfishness, turning from sin to God's domain, which is the rule and reign of the Father in the kingdom. So if we have remorse over sin, it's because we identify loss. We identify shortcoming. But the beauty of repentance and its association with the kingdom is the kingdom of God is of great value. The, great, the kingdom of God is of great significance. So we can turn from loss to value, loss to significance, loss to worth, kingdom worth. And that's what I want to emphasize today, is repentance isn't just about focusing on what we did that was bad or sinful or wrong. It's about recognizing the value that God has placed in our lives and the value that God offers through His kingdom. So it's about turning towards something of great value, the kingdom treasures, if you will. That's what Jesus was inviting the people to do, is Turn to the kingdom, the kingdom treasures, the kingdom significance, the kingdom importance, the kingdom value. And that's what we need to focus on when we think about repentance, is we are transitioning into greatness. We are transitioning into worth. We are transitioning into significance when we turn from something of lesser value towards something of greater value. And God's kingdom is of great value. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but have everlasting life. So oftentimes, repentance 
is brought up with the idea that we need to be saved or born again in our spirits to enter heaven after we die. Repentance is about stepping into the kingdom while we're alive on the earth. It's about entering the kingdom here and now. It's not about making a decision on earth that will affect us only after we die and get into heaven later on. We make a decision to repent from sin and wrongdoing because we recognize how the kingdom of God is at hand, just like Jesus preached. And we recognize how the kingdom of God is present around us here and now. And we can step into that realm, into that dimension where God has his full rule and reign, where he can accomplish his heart's delight and the deepest desires and dreams that are on his heart for people that are in the world. So repentance isn't just about the afterlife. It's about the life that we can experience here in the present, in the moment, to experience the God of the kingdom that Jesus preached about. So repentance, okay? This is what I think of when I think of repentance. Repentance is when you stop doing things your way and you start doing things God's way. So I'm going to read this verse, 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their, heal their land. So if I think about this, I'm looking at it like, God said, if my people, which would be people that know God, shall humble themselves and seek his face, then will he hear, hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. I'm thinking about this. What this means, see, is action. See, if my people will humble themselves, okay, change the way that they do business, seek his face, and start living a life of holiness, the result of that is forgiveness. The result of that is God healing your land because you see, this is so cool, and, and uh, there's so many things I want to share about this, but when you start doing things God's way, your life starts getting transformed. Everything that you've done wrong is made right because you start facing it. You start to, you start to um, take action to fix what is undone, what's, what's done. See, if you humble yourself and you stop doing it the way that you've been doing it and you start doing it the way that God's doing it, the fruit of that is a, for, a forgiveness, a land that's being healed, a life that's transformed. So to me, repentance, okay, first of all, repentance to me is understanding the gospel that Jesus Christ died, not to take your place, but for you to take his place. Meaning this, that when you are walking with Holy Spirit, you can do all things that he's done. So when you choose to sin, when you choose to continue doing things your way, when you continue to do church your way instead of God's way, then you're living in sin. And when you repent, you realize that you're doing things wrong, okay? And you start to do things right with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, this is my take on repentance. Blessings. Hello, this is Anthony. Um, I'm with Be the Gospel, and I wanted to share with you just a very quick meaning of repentance. See, um, in today's definition, it's about having remorse, feeling sorry, feeling guilty, and it's based completely on feeling. And if you go back and you look at the etymology of where the word repentance comes from, and it's a derivative from penance, right? So who is real big on penance? You can see that we can tie it directly into the Catholic Church. But when we actually look at the Greek word, Kone Greek word for repentance, it is metanol, okay? So this is the Greek verb for repentance, and it means to change one's mind, change one, one's understanding, change um, the very thought pattern uh, concerning something. And so when God tells you to repent, he's not telling you to feel sorry for sin. He's telling you to acknowledge that it's sin and to turn from it and everything in the past is wiped away. Okay, because if we say that it is based on emotion and feeling sorry for sinning, then what about in the Old Testament when God repents 
multiple times. You find it in Isaiah, you find it in Amos, you always you find it several times in Jeremiah. It says that he repented of doing or thinking a certain way and did it no more. So if it was sin, then that's saying that God sinned. So it has nothing to do with sin and everything to do with the changing of one's mind in agreeing with God that it is sin. And therefore, if you agree with God that it's sin, and do you will do it no longer because it's contrary to your nature. It's contrary to the very nature of God. See, because if you can't claim that God is sinning, that goes against his nature. That makes you a liar because he is true. And so when we look at it from a Christian perspective or from our perspective, we have his nature. Okay, so his nature is not to become a slave of sin, but a slave of righteousness. So very simply, all repentance means, biblical repentance means, is to change one's mind. So it's very simple, very easy, don't overcomplicate it. So and repentance to me is this, is stop thinking that you are above God and start realizing that God is enough, that God has all the answers that God knows better than you. When it comes to Jesus today in the new covenant that we live, we see that people have a hard time accepting that Jesus is enough, that he being offered as the lamb on the cross was sufficient, was sufficient to wash away our sins, to forgive us from our debt, to pay all of our debt, and that all the answers are found in Jesus Christ himself. So we can see that from the beginning of creation until today, uh, God was always trying to lead his people to repentance because they always were falling to a state where they put themselves in front of God. The greatest difference that we see now is that in the old covenant, uh, the way that people were brought to repentance before God was through works which was through dead works. And if we would look at the Old Covenant, we can see that everything was carnal. Everything was carnally minded. The law, uh, the works of the law, the ordinances, everything that it was done was, by, uh, was for man because man was carnal. Man could not be spiritual. But now that we are in the New Covenant, we, the problem that we see today is that we as the church, as the church are still living in a carnal mindset. We are still not living in the spiritual. And what I mean by this is that repentance today is actually recognizing that Jesus Christ is enough. And it is actually to stop doing that works and to stop allowing the old mindset of the old covenant to get in the way of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because what we see today is that people uh, are claiming to have a relationship with Jesus in the old covenant, but they're living in the old ways, meaning this, they are still thinking that they, they have to gain the, their favor before God. And actually, if you think about this, it's actually a very selfish mindset because you're thinking that you can do something that can please God. As in fact, that all you can and should do is allow Jesus Christ to be inside of you because he has already pleased God. You have never pleased God. You will never please God. But Jesus Christ has because he was offered as the perfect sacrifice, holy, righteous, without any sin. And he is the only way that you can enter to the kingdom of God. Because now he lives in you and you're doing things his way. So by you going to church on Sunday, doesn't mean that you're going to get your favor before God. By you giving tithes, it doesn't mean that, that you're going to get favor before God. By you um, thinking that you should read your Bible three times a day, it's all carnal, it's not it's spiritual. Then you need to repent because you are trying to serve God, which is Jesus Christ, in this new covenant that is amazing covenant you're trying to serve him by living in the old covenant which means that you're tr actually trying to serve yourself and not serve god you're trying to do things your way and not god's way so you need to repent and you need to accept and understand that what was done on the cross was sufficient and you need to get out of religion you need to get out of it, the mindset of um ordinances and uh, and works of that works because by doing that, you're crucifying Jesus Christ again, and you cannot do that. And once you fully understand this, then you can fully start worshiping God by your life. You can actually serve a living God who lives inside of you, and you're letting his resurrection spirit flow through you, where no longer you're pleasing yourself, you're pleasing God.
Welcome to the Eden Homestead. My name's Don Blizzard, and my good friend Brian Wiggins over in Brazil has asked me to do a short video on the topic of repentance. And what I'd like to do is just to mention real quick, the word for repentance is the word metanoia, which is actually two words. Uh, the first word, meta, means uh, again, and noia means think. So God wants us to think again about how we're living our lives. And if we have a radical rethink about God, for example, then God, too, will have a radical rethink concerning us. Now, we've, we see repentance in the Bible both applied to man and also, believe it or not, to God. Now, the difference is uh, it's, it's stark. Repentance with man is more geared toward man's morality, where repentance with God the Father has more to do with God's thoughts toward us in his mind. So we see in Genesis, for example, before God flooded the world, God had repented of creating man. And uh, this is something that, you know, God had a rethink about the fact that this, this, this creation that he's made, every thought in their hearts were evil continually. And he ended up destroying uh, the creation. And I praise the Lord that later uh, in time, after the days uh, of Noah, since Adam's fall, when this happened, that when the ark rested, God promised never again uh, to, to smite man. And I think, you know, this is, this is a blessing to hear. But God, again, he, he, had a, he had a rethink about what had happened regarding Genesis. And understanding that the, the, the heart of men is evil, he, he just, he said, I won't do this again. And he also lifted the curse off the earth, which is another topic we'll get into uh, here at the school later, because this is something that I think is, it's groundbreaking when we understand this. But repentance shouldn't just uh, be something that's in the mind. It has to make its way to the outer world. So it can be in our spirit, man, but it needs to be manifest through our flesh, because man is both flesh and spirit. So what the Spirit of God does is he brings us into conviction which is his ministry. The Bible says that the Spirit of God, he, he convicts the world of three things, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Now, he does that for the purpose that we will then turn and confess our sins toward God. And in fact, within the body of Christ, God commands us that if we see a brother that is, he's erring in his ways, we're to re rebuke him so that he will come back and repent. And th that's usually done with this. So it's not just something that we're to just change our mind on and that's the end of it. It is to have an outward manifestation. And the, that comes through confession with our lips. So the confession is very, very important and I'll tell you why. Imagine being a judge sitting on a bench and there's this criminal that's brought before you and he's got a record as long as your arm and he just sits there in front of you as the judge and won't even acknowledge his crime, but he wants mercy. Is a good judge gonna give mercy to a person who's not even willing to acknowledge what he's done? Now you know the answer for this question, and it's no different with God. At the end of the age, Jesus Christ himself will judge mankind. So we can either hide our sins before him now and later have them uncovered by his wrath, or we could confess those sins now and have them covered by God's mercy. And that way, one day when we go before the judge, we'll already have our acquittal in hand. And I think that brings to us a very healthy fear of God. And, and I think that's something that's been lost today with regard to repentance. Because I don't think we fully understand what repentance is because of this whole separation between the physical and the spiritual aspects of man. Listen, it, does, it begins in the mind, but it plays out in our morals. So I think it's very important that we understand that connection and understand that repentance is not regret, which is self-centered. It's not remorse, which is other-centered. Repentance is God-centered. So when we realize that our actions have affected God, the very one who created us, it cost him everything. It cost him the life of his own son. If that doesn't affect you in some way, the Bible says godly sorrow. It's not repentance, but it leads to it. So I think it's time for us folks to look up to the King of Kings 
the one who's coming and will judge both the living and the dead at the end of the age. And we need to have a healthy fear of God and we need to repent of our sins. Now, John's message didn't just stop there. He said, repent and be baptized. And these two things go hand in hand. But unfortunately today, many people are getting baptized based on a profession of faith rather than proof of repentance. And you know, the Bible doesn't bracket faith in Jesus with forgiveness. The Bible brackets together repentance with forgiveness. And even the prayer that the Lord taught us, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who debt sin against us. So we have an obligation to take the mercy that we have received from God and to extend that onto our brethren within the body of Christ. Our failure to do that very thing can result in God rescinding his forgiveness of our sins. And that puts us in a very sorry state if we don't do that. But we need to understand, repentance needs to precede forgiveness. Many times I hear people say, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? No, 70 times seven. But we often forget the clause of that in Luke 17, in the first four verses, if he repents. You see, forgiveness is conditional upon our repentance. Christ has earned that salvation for us. That doesn't change or affect anything. But our reception, our response to that gift is, is, is essential for our receipt of it. And we can deny ourselves, but it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves us, not repentance. We are justified in the Bible by faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible doesn't say that we're justified by our repentance. And you have to understand that God God will justify us before he'll sanctify us. We see a perfect example of that in the Old Testament. Uh, the nation of Israel was ca in captivity to the bondage of the Egyptians, okay? And what God did through the ministry of Moses, he used Moses to lead his people out from the bondage of the Egyptians uh, into, the, into the wilderness where God then legislated to them. So God first liberated his people all right, from Egypt, and then legislated to them out in the wilderness. And the reason for that uh, is that God set them free, all right, and then legislated to them how they're to live their lives in appreciation for what he's done. And one thing you'll discover that God hates is ingratitude. And, uh, you know, and, and God's people then were very ungrateful, uh, as we can read in the Old Testament, in Numbers chapter 21, for example, when they were out there in the wilderness, they began to complain about the food. And God was so enraged by this ingratitude of them balking at his provision that God actually began smiting his own people. He began striking them dead by sending poisonous snakes amongst them. And uh, they, they realized that the problem was the food. They went back to Moses to say they were sorry and to call these snakes off. And God didn't do that. God said, no, Moses, I'm not gonna do that. Go to the high camp, the high hill of the camp, put up a rod with a brass serpent on it, and when people get bit, if they will gaze upon that snake on the stake, the venom won't kill them. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, in the same way, the Son of Man will be lifted up. You see, the wages of sin today is still death, regardless of the fact that Christ has earned our salvation on the cross. So we need to repent. And again, repentance is part of our conversion, which has nothing to do with our salvation. The conversion is what turns our lives around to receive that magnificent gift that Christ earned at the cross. And repentance begins with conviction and it ends with our correction. So it, it starts in the spiritual, but also manifests in the physical. And this was the problem we see between the two Testaments. The nation of Israel took the word of God, literally, and they followed it to the T. The Pharisees were very faithful to give the 10%, to feed the widows, to feed the orphans, do the things necessary as the minimum, but they wouldn't go beyond. It wasn't mediating anything within their spirit man. And so it just became physical for them. And this was the rebuke of the prophets when God sent them into Israel. But today in the New Testament times, we're so spiritually minded now that we don't see the connection now in the physical. 
and God wants both. So we are just as guilty as our, our Jewish brethren in Old Testament times today in the body of Christ because we don't see any physical connection with repentance and many think it's just merely a change of mind, something that happens within the spirit man. But guess what? Unless it has some outward manifestation in the flesh because these things come together as a per perfect whole, then it's incomplete and it falls short of what God has required of every one of us. I hope this short... There you have it, guys. Repentance. I hope you guys gained full understanding as well as I did. This has been an amazing opportunity. I want to thank all my friends for helping me make this video. I want to thank my wife for participating and shedding so much life and truth into the subject of repentance. Guys, thank you. I hope that you're blessed. I want to leave you guys with this. There are two types of Christians. Even Paul spoke about this. There are ones that walk in the spirit and there's ones that walk in the flesh. The ones that walk in the flesh cannot enter the kingdom. The ones that walk in the spirit will absolutely enter the kingdom. So today, if you're walking in the flesh, repent. Turn towards righteousness and start living a life righteous, holy, before God. Because, you know, the thing that, that even my wife said as we were making this video to me, and I want to bring it out, is you should not be fearful of your sin, but you should be feel, fearful of your not repenting. God gave us the gift of repentance, guys. Stop living a life of flesh. Stop living a life of doing things your way, but start doing things God's way. Guys, when you start to walk into the Spirit, when you start to repent from your sin, you'll never go back to your sin because you'll understand that Jesus was enough. Jesus freed you from your sin so you could live a life sinless. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven in sin. It ain't going to happen, guys. So, be blessed in Jesus' name. And guys, let's start living a life holy and righteous before God. Blessings from Brazil. <laughs>